Okay. Great. So, Dima, please continue. Yes. Uh, just one second. Where is that? Yeah, okay. Okay, so last time I tried to do a quick introduction into moduli spaces, and today we're going to use them to construct once again the KDV hierarchy. So the equations of the KDV hierarchy. And uh, so there are two main ingredients for that. One is that I, the one that I introduced last time, it is the, the Hodge bundle. So over MGN bar, oops, one moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the Hodge bundle, I recall that it's a vector bundle of uh, rank G and we're going to denote by lambda G its top churn class or the Euler class. So all right, CG of E, it's the top churn or Euler class of, of the Hodge bundle. So it lies in H2G of MGN bar. And the other key ingredient is something I'm going to introduce now. It is called the double ramification cycle. So the double ramification cycle, A1AN. Um, so it, it also lies in, uh, it also lies in H, H2G of MG and bar. Uh, moreover, actually, but it depends on n parameters. Actually, if I take all of them equal to zero, I get minus one to the power g lambda g. So it is a so it is a generalization of uh, of this uh, of the of this class lambda g. But it depends so it depends on depends on n integers integers a one a n uh, such that their sum is equal to zero. So actually, it is not so easy to define the cycle uh, precisely. So I'm going to do several steps. First, the idea, then the properties, and then a more precise construction that is still not um, um, well, not not entire, not not totally general. But so you'll see. So first, uh, let's say the idea. So we fix we fix an integers where given an integers a one a n whose sum is equal to zero, and we have a Riemann surface or a complex curve with n marked points. So this is an element of M G N bar, and we would like to ask so we can form the divisor, the divisor sum a i x i on c so a divisor on a complex curve is just uh, a linear combination of uh, of points and the question is is it principal principal so a principal divisor is the divisor of a rational function. So another way to ask the same question is, does there exist a function, meromorphic function? Meromorphic. Dima, I'm sorry, there is a black rectangle. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the point. Yeah, okay. Here, oh, okay, one second, it is. Um, All right. Is it better? Yes. Yes, it disappeared. Again. Now it's gone. Okay, it was interference with Telegram notifications. 
I didn't, I don't know how they, okay. So does there exist a meromorphic, does there exist a meromorphic function F on C with zeros and poles at zeros and poles? Uh, there is a question in the chat. There's a question in the chat, okay. What is the, what's, what? Uh, I don't understand. What ID DRG? What is ID? <laughs> so DRD is, for, DRG stands for double ramification cycle and I'm going to define it right now. I don't know if that if this is, this is the question you can ask it. We're, we're not so many, so you can ask it aloud. Is that the question? I'm not sure it was typed properly. Okay. So, okay, so is there a function with zeros and poles at the points x1, xn? of orders, orders A1, AN. So if AI is positive, it's a zero. If AI is negative, it's a pole. If AI is equal to zero, AI is actually also allowed to be equal, allowed to, be equal to zero. In this case, XI is just a point that is neither a zero nor a pole. And we're asking, does there exist a function with precisely these zeros and poles? So if the answer is yes, then we include this point in the double ramification cycle. So double ramification cycle A1AN is the Poincaré dual, Poincaré dual, dual cohomology class homology class to the locus of curves C x1 xn in MGN bar. Let me write in MGN actually, because then it will be a precise definition in MGN such that the divisor sum of AI xi is principal. So this is a condition of co-dimension G. Um, in genus zero, for instance, in genus zero on CP1, if you just fix zeros and poles, there is always a rational function. You can just write product of Z minus XI to the power AI, and you get a meromorphic function with zeros and poles precisely at points XI. So, so in genus zero, in genus zero, the DR cycle is just, uh, so the DR, DR cycle is the whole moduli space. There is no condition. And the Poincare dual, the Poincare dual is just one. But then in genus one, so if you're looking at the elliptic, it's an elliptic curve, you can draw the, that if you studied elliptic curves, you can draw the lattice of parallelograms and if you write, if you draw zeros and poles, you know that there's sum, the sum of zeros and poles with weights must be equal uh, modulo the lattice. So in this case, there is one condition. So the double ramification cycle is of co-dimension one and uh, the class is in, in, uh, in H2. So this thing is in general in H2G. In, uh, so for higher genus, Actually, the divisor, so this divisor is an element of the Jacobian of the curve. And the Jacobian of the curve is a G dimensional complex torus. So, in this G dimensional complex torus, you have the trivial divisor zero and this divisor sum AIXI, and you ask them to coincide. So, that's uh, if, uh, well, if you have a family of curves, usually they coincide on co dimension. On the, locus of co-dimension G. Okay, so this is this definition actually works. So this actually 
actually works on MGN uh, because the locus that I defined, so the locus defined in this way is actually a smooth locus. Well, yeah, actually it's a, yeah, it is a smooth locus of pure codimension G. So it is indeed a cycle and you can define and you can define the Poincare dual cohomology class. But as you go to singular curves, to stable curves, non-smooth stable curves, this definition doesn't work any longer. So there are various difficulties. Um, okay, but the definition, definition on MG and bar is more complicated. Um, so maybe, okay, so I, I maybe I, I will permute. So maybe I will do, maybe I will give you the proper definition. So let's, let's restrict. So let's, let me give you, give me a proper definition on what is called MGN compact type. So this is an intermediate space. That is a subset of MGN bar where, where non-separating nodes are forbidden, non-separating nodes are forbidden. So if you take a stable curve like that, right, this is this is in compact type because every node, you can take every node here. And if you unglue the two components, the two branches of the node, you, your curve decomposes into two, two components. So every node separates the curve into two parts. But now if I add one more component like that, this is not in compact type any longer because now if I, unglue this node, for example, or this one, well, any, any node in this cycle, actually, if I, so if I separate the two branches at this node, I still get a connected curve. So this is not in compact type any longer. Uh, okay, so, and the thing is that over, so for curves of compact type, you can still define Jacobians just by taking the product of Jacobians of each connected component. So you can still define, so over, over MGN compact type, there is still, there is still a universal Jacobian, universal Jacobian. So if you take, if you take a point here, there is the corresponding curve CP. And so the universal Jacobian, so over this point, you will have, over this point, you will have the Jacobian of CP. So this is the universal Jacobian. It is the family of Jacobians of curves. So it is still defined for curves of compact types and you can still define you can still define this uh, this section that to the point P assigns so that assigns the divisor sum of AI XI. So this is in the Jacobian. Let's call this section S. Um, and then the double ramification cycle. is the pullback under the section S of the class of the zero section. Zero section of the universal Jacobian. So the thing is now you have, maybe I should draw a picture. Now you have your moduli space. You have these Jacobians. 
So you have two sections. One section is just the zero section. This is the zero section. And another section is this section, sum of a i x i. And what we would actually like is to find their intersection, but not geometric intersection, the intersection in cohomology. So you take the class of one of the zero section and you take the pull back under, under this section here, or you can do the, the other way around, whichever you prefer. But, but if you just follow my definition, if you just take their geometric intersection, so their intersection is not transversal. So their geometric intersection will have components of different dimensions. So this will not allow you to define a cycle. If you want to define a proper cycle in cohomology, you actually have to take the intersection in, in cohomology. And this defines you the double ramification cycle in this MGN compact type. And then the definition for MGN bar also exists, but it's even more complicated, so I will not tell it now. And maybe just one comment: Why is it called a double ramification cycle? It's because when you have a when you have a function from C to CP one, so when you have a meromorphic function. Right, you can draw this picture like this. You have CP1 here with zero and infinity. And uh, here is your curve. And here you have the points XI with AI positive. Here you have points XI with AI equal to zero. And over infinity, you have points xi with a i negative. So this is a this is f and it has a complicated ramification over zero and a complicated ramification over infinity. So it has two points of complicated ramification and this is why it is called a double ramification cycle. This is just to explain the, the name double ramification. So there are two properties of double ramification cycles that uh, create the uh, commuted, well, the integrable hierarchies. So let me tell you the two properties. properties of dr. So, so the first property is that drg a1 a n is polynomial is polynomial in a1 a n. Uh, do, yes. Dimo, could, could, could it maybe just? Uh, I'm sorry for interruption. Just for uh, so, uh, uh, how is it obvious that for when all a i is a zero, you get the lambda class? That's one question. Another question is: so you should be able to decompose those cycles in in Picard group. Is it kind of trivial to, uh, well, to express them in terms of lambdas, boundaries, and and, and so on. So both both are non-trivial. Um, okay. So first of all, it's not in big R group. So DRG is an H two G. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Thanks. But nonetheless, there is a formula. There is a formula for the cycle in terms of tautological classes. Okay. So you can write an explicit formula. I'm going to write it in uh, in compact type again because in compact time the formula is much simpler. But there is all, there is a complete formula in MGN bar. Okay. Uh, and okay. Uh, so lambda G, well, so to, to get lambda G, you actually need the proper definition. So this is a, it is not extremely complicated, but uh, it requires, it requires constructing the obstruction theory. So mm -hmm. I can tell you maybe an, another time it will take. Yeah. Okay. Take. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, yeah, you. Could say, thank you for, thank you for the question. 
Okay, so so I was going to as an illustration as an illustration I'm going to write the formula the formula for uh, in compact type. So the formula is as follows. So formula formula in MGN compact type. So it so this formula misses part of the information, but uh, but the, the other part is more complicated. So let me write just this one. So it's. Um, one over g factorial times something to the power g and here's this something so first of all there is some for i from one to n uh, a i squared over two times psi i and psi i is the first churn class of the of l i and l i is the remember from last time it's the Cotangent, cotangent line, line to ith marking. And then there is a sum over, so again, one, yeah. Okay, so I'm sum, sorry. Yes. I think I thought uh, in, in this formula, Psi i are the pullbacks from mg1. No, no, I am writing no. So I'll, <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment. So indeed in Heinz paper, it is wrote in this way, but I am writing the formula with the usual psi classes and uh, I'll tell you what's the difference. It's, it's, so what I'm writing is correct. I'll, in, I'll make another comment in a moment. Okay, and so here you take the sum. Okay, so let me divide by two and then you take the sum over for h from zero to G and I subset any subset of one N. And then you write a I squared over two. So a I is the sum of a I's for this part of the, of the <clears throat> sum over the subset. And here you take the class of the boundary divisor with a separating node because we're in compact type. So we're only looking at separating node, separating node. So here we have genus H and marked points I, and here we have genus G minus H and marked points I complements. And so, Originally, this formula appeared in Heinz paper, so it's called Heinz formula. And indeed, and he wrote it in a slightly different way where psi classes were indeed pullbacks from MG1. And then in this sum, you didn't, you didn't get genus zero. So actually when you re-express psi classes uh, from their pullbacks, you get, you get this formula, which is more compact and well, easier to raise. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So as you see, this uh, this formula is not only polynomial; it is even homogeneous of degree two G in 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 AIs. So here you have AI. Here you have some uh, here you have some linear combination of AIs. All is of degree two G. And uh, so, but this is only in compact type. If you extend it to MGN bar, you get other terms that are not necessarily homogeneous of genus two G, but it's still polynomial. Okay, and the other property, so this is the first important property, the polynomiality in A1AN. And the second property is uh, a lift of the WDVV relation. <laughs> so WDVV stands for Wittenday graph Verlinde Verlinde, and actually it's a, it's a very simple relation. So it's a relation in M04 bar. Remember, M04 bar is a sphere. And there are three special points that corresponds to, to non-smooth stable curves. So the WDVV relation actually says that two points on the sphere are homologous to each other. They represent the same homology class. 
So that's really a very simple fact, but if you translate it in terms of gram of Witten invariance, you get well, you, you get a, a differential equation, so which is actually called the WDV relation. So here we are going to do the following. If we um, so suppose that we have a, a list a list a one a n, and then we have two zeros in the end. So that means we have a double ramification cycle. So there are, there is a ramification over zero and a ramification over infinity. And then there are just two, two points that are just mapped somewhere in this, in this CP1. So we're looking at all curves with functions F like that. So let's call these two points A and B. And then we can intersect this double ramification cycle. So we can take the WDVV relation in the image. So we can degenerate it in two, in two different ways, AB or BA. So you see, there is there is a map from this there is a map from this uh, from the space of curves like that into CP into M zero four bar by just taking the curve downstairs with marked point zero A B and infinity. So that's a map from from this double ramification cycle into M zero four bar, and then in M zero four bar we have two homologous points. So if we if we take the pre-images of these two points, we, we will get two uh, cycles inside the double ramification cycle that are homologous to each other. And when we look at what happens when the image degenerates in this way, we actually see that, so the, the picture is the following. We have a double ramification cycle here, and then here we have some trivial curves and another double ramification cycle here. So one, two, three. Yeah, I mean, it should be, should be, should be the same number as before. So maybe I'll, I'll erase a little bit like that. And then we have a trivial curve here. Maybe another trivial curve here. Right, so yeah and some kissing points. And so there is the point whose pre-image is A here and the point whose pre-image is B here. And then we need a curve of genus two. So maybe I'll add genus one here and we get genus two because there are two kissing points. So the curve, so the double ramification cycle degenerates into, into product of two double ramification cycles and same th same thing here. So similar picture. And uh, so the WDVV relation implies that the sum over, oops, the sum over all degenerations like this is equal to the sum of all degenerations with B on the left. Degenerations. So we get a rather complicated relation and this relation will actually imply the commutativity of the flows. So this is, I, I understand that it is pretty vague right now. But this is the relation that will tell, uh, tell us that if we apply one flow that corresponds to the point A and then that, well, that corresponds to, let's say that corresponds to this double ramification cycle and then another flow that corresponds to this double ramification cycle. And then we can apply them in the opposite order and we will still get the same thing.
So yeah, so I, I am keeping this vague at the moment because I have not defined the flows. I have not explained how to use the double ramification cycles to define the flows yet. So I'm coming to that. Okay, so what's the relationship with KDV, right? How, how are we going to find our function? KDV is supposed to be a differential equations on U. So how are we going to find, how are we going to find uh, differential equations on U with that? So relation, relation with, with KDV. So the relationship goes via the formal Fourier, trans Fourier series. So we will write U of X as sum for A in Z, QA e to the power IAX. So imagine that, imagine that uh, U is periodic with period two pi, and then this is the Fourier, the Fourier series for, for U. And then we can write, uh, so if we multiply expressions like that, for instance, if I want to write U squared of X, well, that will be sum over A i A two in Z, Q A i, Q A two, e to the power A i, a1 plus a2 x. Right, so I, again, I promised there would be no analysis. So this is pure, the purely formal expression. I don't, I don't worry if this converges or not. This is just what I get when I, when I write the, when I write the products. I can also write the derivative. If I want to write u prime of x, this will be sum over a. A Q A, right? Now oh, there is probably an I here. I A X. Okay. So now let me write the let me write the, yeah, I realized that I forgot, I forgot this I, so probably what I'm writing is going to be off by some powers of, of the imaginary unit. I apologize for that. Indeed, in the formulas, there are some powers of I that I ignored. So let me just, let me just write this I in a different color and pretend it's not there. So now I'm going to write, the equations of the KDV flow. Here is the equation. DU over D T D. So remember there are all these times T to zero T one T two is equal to D over D X of the following expression. Sum over G and N one over N factorial integral over mg n plus two bar. And here I take the double ramification cycle with a zero and then some ai's and in the end a minus sum of ai's so that the sum, the total sum is equal to zero. Um, I see I will need bigger, bigger brackets because it will not, it will not fit into one line times lambda g times let me write the classes i'll try to write the classes in one times psi zero to the power d so the marked points i will number them zero one two three n n plus one from zero to n plus one so as to respect the indices so psi zero corresponds to the marked point number zero and all this is multiplied by QA1, QAN, e to the power I sum of, so let me write AJ X.
Okay, so this is our wonderful formula. Let's look at it carefully and try to understand what it means. So first of all, what do I see here? Here, I see a polynomial in A1, AN. This polynomial is obtained by taking the cohomology class given by the double ramification cycle that is polynomial in A1, AN and multiplying it by some other cohomology classes and integrating over the space MGN plus two bar. So in the end, this the integral of cohomology classes is a number, but since this depends on, on uh, A1, AN, I will get a polynomial in A1, AN. So this whole thing, this whole thing, maybe I'll, this whole thing is a polynomial in A1, AN. And this is why it is so important that the double ramification cycle is polynomial in A1, AN. Okay, now if you look at my formulas here, you see that this is, these are precisely expressions that, uh, that I have. I have some, so products of Q, QAIs, and then I have a polynomial. So here I have a polynomial in A. So expressions like that are actually, can be rewritten as uh, expressions of U and its derivatives. So this huge thing in brackets, is a polynomial in u, u prime, u double prime, and so on. And then I differentiate one last time with respect to x and get the, the equations of the flow. So let's try to do that. Yeah, maybe one, one more remark before we, before we, are, before we go to, to computing examples. Let's, um, so there is the sum, there is a sum over G and N, but actually this sum is finite. Uh, so let us, so let us compute the dimension, the dimensional constraints. So the dimensional constraint is that the, the dimension of MG N plus two bar is equal to the degree of the class. And the degree of the class is, uh, so I will write the complex degree is G for the double ramification cycle plus another G for lambda G plus D for the power of the, of the psi class. And this dimension is equal to three G minus three plus the number of marked points, which is N plus two. So if I look at, these, at this equality, I see that D is equal to G plus N minus one. So actually for any given D, there is only a finite number of possibilities for G and N. So it looks like an infinite, an infinite sum, but actually it's a finite sum because, well, G plus N should be equal to D plus one. Right, so every, every expression DU over DTD is actually, is actually going to be a finite expression. Okay, so now let's, Let's compute an example. So let's take D equals zero to begin with. So D equals zero, G plus N is equal to D plus one. That was the condition. Maybe I'll write it like that. So G plus N is equal to one. So I have two cases. I have G equals zero, N equals one, and G equals one, N equals zero. So actually this case will give me zero. So I will concentrate on the other one. And in the next example we'll do I'll just now, and just not to waste time, I, I will ask you to believe me, to take my word for it that this term gives you zero. In the next example, we will compute a genus one term, but it will be more interesting than just getting zero. So let's just look at the genus zero, n equals one. 
So what do we have? We have one over n factorial. So one over one factorial. Then we have the integral over m zero n plus two, which is three. So this is just one point. Then we have a DR cycle, but the DR cycle is equal to one in genus zero. As I said, the, D, the DR cycle is always equal to one. Then we have lambda zero. So lambda zero, well, lambda zero is the, uh, is the top churn class of the trivial vector bundle. In this case, the Hodge bundle has rank zero because we're in genus zero. So lambda zero is, so maybe I'll, maybe I'll write in some, in some, I, I know. So let me, let, let's, let's, let me write the first, the uh, first, uh, the formula as it is, and then double ramification cycle times lambda g times psi zero to the power d. Uh, but so now I replace it by one integral over a point, one times one, and psi zero to the power zero is also one. So I just get one. The polynomial, the green polynomial in this formula is always equal to one. So what remains is the product of Q's and in this case, there is only one Q because n is equal to one and this exp exponential. So what I get is sum over A in Z. Um, A e to the power I, I A X. Uh, sorry, no, not A, just, <clears throat> just one, one times one times. My polynomial is one one times e to the power a one i a x. And this is just u. This is just u. So the first equation is du over dt zero equals d over dx of u. And this is indeed the first equation of the KDV flow. As I said, the first equation is always just d over dt zero equals u prime. So I found the first trivial equation of the KDV flow. Now let's look at the next one. Let's take d equals two. So d equals two. Uh, sorry, d equals one. I apologize. D equals one. So g plus n is equal to d plus one. That is two. So I have three cases, and again, one case is actually going to be going to be when n is equal to zero. Actually, when n is equal to zero, you always get zero. So maybe I could write it from the from the start. N greater than or equal to one, then I wouldn't even have to to believe. <coughs> ask you to believe me. So we actually have g equals zero, n equals two, or g equal, equals one, n equals one. And then in principle, we could also have g equals two, n equals zero, but this, this, will, this will give us zero. So we have two terms to compute. Well, let's start with g equals zero, n equals two, because in genus zero, everything is very simple to compute. Actually, we get one again. Once again, we have no, no. It's okay. Sorry, it's it's a little bit, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit funnier now. But we still get one. So now we have the integral over. So let me write the the formula and then and then we'll transform the terms times psi zero to the power one now d. Okay. So this transforms into so integral over m zero four bar which is the sphere, the DR cycle is equal to one in genus zero, lambda zero is equal to one. And here we get psi one to the power one because now D is equal to one. So this is the integral over M zero four bar of one of the psi classes and this integral is equal to one. So if my introduction to psi classes were a bit longer yesterday, I would have computed this 
it is a <clears throat> it is not very hard to compute in this case. It's, it's a in this case it's just a, a an actual line bundle over the sphere, so you can compute its first rank class without too much pain. So if I go back to my formula, the green polynomial is again equal to one. And now n is equal to two. So in this product, I will have QA1 and QA2. Right, so I get sum over A1, A2, QA1, QA2, e to the power i, A1 plus A2, x. What is this? This is u squared. It is one of the examples I gave you. So our first term, genus zero term, is equal to u squared. Uh, except that, sorry, I forgot one thing. I forgot the one over n factorial, one half. So actually one half of u squared. I'm trying to be as honest as possible. One half of u squared. So th this is our first term. Now we go, this one, now we go to the second term. Genus one, one marked points. So we have one over one factorial, integral over mgn plus two bar, dr cycle zero a minus a, so there is just one a one here, times lambda one, times psi zero to the power one. Um, times qa e to the power i a x sum over a. Okay, so remember I gave you the formula, I gave you a formula for the double ramification cycle. So genus is one, n is equal to, so one, three. Um, yeah, so just before, yeah, sorry. So just before, just before, just before, um, just before using the formula for the double ramification cycle, I will use one more thing. Right, so now we have this, we have this thing to compute. Double ramification cycle times lambda one times psi zero. Okay, so I will use, actually I will use in this computation, I will use twice what is called the dilaton relation. Dilaton relation. So it says the following thing. Suppose I have a class, a cohomology class in MGN bar. And then I have a forgetful map that goes from MGN plus one bar to MGN bar that forgets the that forgets the last marked point. And I would like to compute the push forward. So I take um, the class Psi n plus one. So this Psi, psi the class Psi n plus one exists only on this space. It doesn't exist on MGN bar. I multiplied by the pullback of alpha and then I take the push forward to MGN bar again. So I take my class alpha that lives here. I pull it back using P to MGN plus one bar. I multiply it by Psi N plus one and I push it back to MGN bar. So the Dilaton relation says that this is equal to 2G minus two plus N times alpha. And uh, the reason is, so I'm not going to prove this precisely, but the reason is that 
the integral of psi n plus one over each fiber, fiber of P is equal to 2G minus two plus n. So this is something to be checked using the definition of, of psi classes. It is not, it is not very, hard to, very hard to check. And uh, once you know that, you actually use the projection formula in cohomology to spread a general statement. So if you take the pull back, then multiply by something and then take the push forward. So the in general, in general, you have uh, right if you in general you have beta, if you take beta times the pullback of alpha and you take the push forward of all this, this is the same thing as the push forward of beta times alpha. So this is the general projection formula in cohomology that works for any proper map. P. And uh, well, and in this case, actually, what I'm the, the only thing I'm saying is that the push forward of psi n plus one <clears throat> is equal to 2g minus 2 plus n. So I'm going to use this in my computation. The first point I'm going to forget is this one. Because I noticed that uh, the double ramification cycle has a zero here, so it does not actually depend on this point. You see, a double ramification cycle, as I told you, it imposes. So it, it. So if I, I remember the numbers of the points, so let me call the points x zero, x one, and x two. Um, so the double ramification cycle requires the requires the the um, divisor ax1 minus ax2 to be principal. This is our, this is my divisor. And this should be principal. And it does not depend on x0. So actually this double ramification cycle is a pullback from, from uh, m12 bar. And the class lambda one, the class lambda one, well, let it circumscribe this. So, and the class lambda one is uh, the first chunk class of the Hodge bundle and the Hodge bundle does not depend on marked points at all. So the Hodge bundle describes uh, holomorphic one forms on curves and uh, it doesn't matter where the marked points are. So the double ramification cycle and lambda one are pullbacks from M1 to bar. And I have this class psi zero, which is precisely what's, what the Dilaton equation. So the Dilaton equation is precisely adapted to this. So 2g minus two plus n in this case is two. This is 2g minus two plus n. Let me use some color. 2g minus two plus n is this two here. And then double ramification cycle of a n minus a times lambda one. I rewrite. Okay, now I use the formula for the double ramification cycle that I told you. So in this case, the formula gives me a squared over two psi one plus a squared over two psi two times lambda one. In the formula, there were also boundary divisors, but in this case, if you take a boundary divisor, so the only boundary divisor that I could take would be like that, a minus a, uh, but then it is multiplied by a plus minus a squared and a plus minus a is zero. So the coefficient of this is zero, zero squared over two. So this divisor actually does not appear. So the double ramification cycle in this case, this is just equal to this. Okay, so I split this. Well, so this is actually, yeah. So th this is a symmetric, this is a symmetric expression. So I can write this as twice integral of a squared psi two lambda one. 
because the marked points play symmetric roles, so I can just. And here I use dilaton again. Once again, the class lambda one is a pullback from M11 bar, and I just have this Psi two. So now two G minus two plus N is equal to one. So I get two times one times the integral. Maybe, I maybe I'll write A squared. Maybe I'll write A squared before the integral times the integral of lambda one over M110, M11 bar. And this integral is equal to one over 24. I think yesterday I showed you that the integral, I told you, I didn't show, I told you that the integral of psi one was equal to one over 24. So on M11 bar, actually the Hodge bundle and the, the Hodge bundle and the line bundle L1 are, are the same, the same. And so their, their first term classes are, their first term classes are the same. So in the end, I get a squared over 12. That was a long computation. But I hope you see that it is possible to do it. So for those of you who know moduli spaces, I hope you could follow what I did. For those of you who don't know, I don't really expect to have followed, but then the conclusion is that it is some reasonably simple manipulation. So you can actually compute these integrals and, and get the answer. So what is my second term? I come back here. Yeah, so my green polynomial now, so now n is equal to one. So I will have QA and e to the power AX and my green polynomial is equal to A squared. So sum over A, A squared, QA e to the power i a x. And this is u double prime. Sorry, 1 12th, 1 12th u double prime. As I promised, I forgot the, that I'm off by a sign. That, that's because I didn't put it somewhere in my formula. <clears throat> I forgot that when you differentiated this, there was an i. So I pretend it is not there. So this is my second term. And remember the first term was one half u squared. So now I have the equation du over dt1 equals d over dx u squared over two plus one twelfth u double prime which is u, u prime plus one twelfth u prime prime prime. I hope that by now you know the KDV equation by heart. So you recognize that this is the right-hand side of the KDV equation. Right, so our formula magically gave us the KDV equation and moreover, I'll show you the formula again. So this formula gives us all KDV flows. I just did the computation for D equals one, but now you can do the computation for D equals two and you will get the next KDV equation. And then you do D equals three. So, so these integrals, these integrals, green integrals over moduli spaces give you precisely the coefficients of the KDV equations. So this is a little bit of a magic in itself. But uh, now you can, you can do even more magic. So this will be my last remark because I'm already you know, just, just finishing. So if I, instead of lambda G, I will put the total, the total churn class of the Hodge bundle. So actually, yeah, maybe let me write it more honestly. Lambda G plus H bar lambda G minus one plus H bar squared lambda G minus two plus and so on. Yeah. 
and I plug it all here instead of lambda g. And I get a quantum version, a quantum version of KDV. And this similar method allows, allows us to quantize a lot of integrable hierarchies. So again, I will be extremely vague, but yeah. I think there is no time even for a vague remark. Yeah, sorry. I, I think I'll, I'll just I'll just just finish here. So there's, I showed you the last construction of KDV, and I promise you that there is that it is very close to many other constructions of other integrable hierarchies and of their quantized version. Okay, and I stop here. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, Dima. Good questions. I have a question. Yes. Uh, on that picture, we had uh, unstable rational components. Uh, is it okay? On which picture? Uh, double ramification cycle. Uh, curve over CP1. Yes. So, yeah, on this picture, right? Yes. Okay. So, so the thing, okay. So, the actual definition of a double ramification cycle, if you want a proper definition, uh, well, a correct definition over MGN bar, you first consider the space of maps like this. And in this case, re you require the map to be stable. So, the curve, curve is unstable. Yes, uh, the curve is unstable. Yes, the curve is semi stable, but the map is stable. Okay. And then you take its virtual fundamental class and you take its push forward to MGN bar. And when you take the push forward, you contract all the unstable components of the curve, or you stabilize the curve. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, about uh, continuation of this uh, class to the boundary, could you comment? Uh, yes, so this is, so again, I repeat, I repeat the same thing. So you have, the, so you define the space of what is called rubber maps to CP1. So these are maps, uh, maps to CP1. Uh, where okay so so there are stable maps as usual stable maps that means that you are allowed to have contracted components something like that uh, except that over zero and infinity it behaves as relative stable maps so you cannot have contracted components over zero and, and infinity and if something wants to go to zero infinity the curve bubbles like this so in the end, you can get chains of change of chains of rational curves between zero and infinity. As I know, relative stable maps is a big theory. Yes. Uh, yes. Very and hard. Yes, you are right, and you need it to define the to define the double ramification cycle. Unfortunately, this is why I skipped this this part. So uh, over compact type, you can define it pretty easily, but over MGN bar, you need you need this theory of relative stable maps. So you take relative stable maps mm -hmm. to CP1 relative to zero and infinity, except that you allow, you do not distinguish two maps that uh, uh, are obtained one from the other by multiplying by a constant. And then you take the virtual fundamental class of the space and you push it down to MGN bar. Mm -hmm. So this space of... Uh... Of the space of such maps has a perfect abstraction theory. Yes, yes, constructed by Jun Li. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, more questions? Well, well, maybe if I could ask Dima. So, uh, just for for an individual double ramification cycle, uh, what would be the structure of its Picard group? Uh, so it's so I, a double ramification cycle is not a smooth. It's not, it's not a smooth variety. It's a cohomology class. You cannot. So there is not actually a cycle. So what, so, so but it's still uh, MGN is also not not a smooth variety, right? Still, well, MGN is a smooth orbifold. So maybe you can look. So you can look at the double ramification cycle inside MGN. Uh, but but so it's not a smooth orbital. So it's 
So in inside MGN, it is smooth, but as soon as you go to the boundary, it's, it gets uh, components of different dimensions. It's not smooth at all. Okay. So. There is a question in the chat. There's a question. Oh, there are four, four unread. Okay. Is it meaningful? Okay. Is it meaningful to take D equals minus one? Uh, well, you'll just get zero. You could take D equals minus one, but you'll just get zero. So it's, uh, yeah, so it's uh, probably not particularly. Maybe maybe I can I can answer a question from from two lectures from Friday I think someone asked me or maybe from you know, from yesterday maybe someone asked me what is the relation of all this with uh, with the Hamiltonian structure so with the Poisson structure and with Hamiltonians so I don't know if that person is still here but actually so this formula here is almost a formula for Hamiltonians. So you can see that Hamiltonians can be constructed using moduli spaces, but with, with, a, with a complicated formula. And uh, the Poisson structure, the Poisson structure is uh, QA, QB equals um, um, A times delta, a plus B zero. So QA and QB, only QA and Q minus A have a non-trivial Poisson bracket and it is equal to A. You can construct these. So I, here I just wrote the equations of the flow, but actually this is a Hamiltonian flow with respect to this Poisson structure. And for Hamiltonians given by a formula that is almost the equation of the flows. As I promised, I promised to answer that. Okay, thank you very much. So, the, thank you very much.